Aloha, you beautiful people. I've been reading a new novel uh, by a writer named John De La Rose. He is the leading Hispanic voice for science fiction. And the novel is For Steam and Country, book one of the adventures of Baron Von Monocle. And I'm going to read a little bit of this novel for you. Hopefully I can do it justice. So let's get into it. A noise like one of the clockwork rotors at the mill down the road clacked in the distance. The mill wasn't loud enough to make an, a noise at this distance. The Liliana had made a similar sound when its turbines engaged. Did Harkapal work his magic with the ship? Perhaps they were coming to get me after all. I glanced to the window, but curtains blocked the view. What's that noise? James asked. Clack, clack, clack. Mr. Gentry stood. The noise grew louder and louder. He rushed to the window, pushing the curtain back. It was just before dusk, difficult to see outside. I've heard that sound before. He choked out the words. This marked the first time I'd heard fear in Mr. Gentry's voice. We all stood, following him to the window, the sound growing still louder. Clackety, 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 clackety. That's no airship, Mr. Gentry said. He protectively pushed James and me from the window. You kids need to get away from the front of the house. We're under attack. Dear, what's wrong? Miss Gentry asked, wide-eyed. I peeked around Mr. Gentry to get a glimpse of the corner of the window, clutching at the back of his shirt. An army marched from the east, toward my farm, toward the Gentry's farm. They had to be about a half mile in the distance, only silhouettes in the darkening sky, but it was unmistakably a wall of men moving in our direction. There were hundreds of them. They carried torches and lanterns and had shiny silver helmets with long points, the same I had seen on the road to Lovebridge. Why went the infantry? Mr. Gentry said. He didn't move, but continued to stare out the window. I never thought I'd see a sight like this again. Wait, again? James asked from off to the side. He clambered for a place at the window to see. I knew you weren't telling the truth about not adventuring. You fought in the Grand Rosanlian Army, haven't you? He sounded more in awe than annoyed. It isn't something I like to relive. That still doesn't explain the sounds, Miss Gentry said. Clackety, clackety, clackety. The sound stopped. Outside, some of the soldiers parted. A giant metallic device I hadn't seen before rolled into our view. Steam spewed from its top. Gears, as large as the ones I had seen in the Liliana's engine room, protruded from its side, and a giant open barrel cranked out of its front. The barrel pointed straight at the window. Down! Mr. Gentry shouted. He lunged and tackled me. I hit the floor with a thud. My lungs burned. James and his mother fell prone to the floor with me. I gasped for air. Thunder shook the house, and the window before us shattered. A round metal ball crashed through the room, tearing apart everything in its path until it punched into the back wall. Shouting men barked orders outside. What was that? Mobile artillery. Cannons become a lot more effective when you can maneuver them quickly. By Malachi, during the war, Mr. Gentry trailed off. Should I grab your musket? James asked, sounding eager to fight. His mother wrapped her arms around him protectively. No, Mr. Gentry said. He rose to his knees and pulled me up. Zara, you know why they're here. I hadn't had time to think about it, but when I saw that look in his eyes, I understood. The Wairairinth came for me. I'd alerted them to my presence once I'd launched that airship. Someone back in Loveridge must have overheard my conversations and found my name. 
Could it have been the innkeeper listening in on my conversations? We should have talked in private. What do I do? I asked. My bottom lip quivered. Another blast hit, this time off to the side of their kitchen, hitting one of the posts. The house creaked in response, but one of the load-bearing walls gave way. It sagged. One more barrage, and it would collapse for sure. I thought about the earthquake, the beginning of this rush of madness that I called my life in recent days. It had caused part of my roof to cave, but nothing like this. Mrs. Gentry screamed, The oven! Was she worried about the milk she still had heating? I glanced over. No, it wasn't that. It was far worse. Wood beams from the ceiling fell right onto the oven. Fire blazed. It would have died out, but now it had fuel. The wood pillar caught fire, and before I could move, that flame trickled up to the wall. Within moments, the Gentry's kitchen became a smoldering inferno. Mr. Gentry shook me. You need to get out of here. Fast. He snapped a finger at James. James, you protect her. Take lightning and ride west. Don't stop until morning. Your mother and I will stall the soldiers. The soldiers? In the flurry of flames, I'd nearly forgotten them. I glanced back out the window. They moved ever closer. Would we have time to escape them with them marching so quickly? I scrambled to my feet. Not arguing, not stopping to think. I'd been used to doing what Mr. Gentry told me, and that was a blessing. James grabbed me by the arm and hauled me towards the back door. I looked back. Mr. Gentry grabbed his musket, getting ready to shoot from his window. Window. Mrs. Gentry grabbed a rake, holding it like a weapon, standing loyally at his side. They were going to lose everything for James and me. I wanted to protest. I wanted to stop them. What could I do? I couldn't allow their sacrifice to be in vain. I'd only get in the way, and the soldiers would capture me, torture me, or worse. Right, so that is a that is a brief passage for Steam and Country, book one of the Adventures of Baron von Monocle by John De La Rose. Um, it is in the steampunk genre. I'm liking it so far. Uh, it has it has a strong and resilient but believable female protagonist uh, in this fantasy setting. But yeah, I'm digging it a lot. Uh, if you enjoyed my reading, please uh, please go check out uh, John De La Rose. I know he's got a website, he's got a blog, he's here on uh, Twitter, and you can find his uh, book on Amazon. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Aloha.